Okay, my friends, time to put our foot down on the floor. I have had CAT scans, DNA tests, specimens, anatomists, chemistry since 2015. That's almost seven years ago. Now, Brian Forrester just put out a video today how he had like, I think, 20 DNA tests done and, and to show where these, these long-headed skulls were in, down in Peru and all that area. They have these very long, elongated skulls and everybody knows about them, but, you know, they're just sort of, nobody really talks about them. Well, Brian really wants to do some investigation on this. He had a ton of different DNA tests done, and then he finds out they won't respond to him. So he shows up unexpectedly, and the guy says, no, we're not going to do it anymore. Get out of here. It's, you contaminated everything. There's no possibility. Even when he had the DNA tests of the people that did the, t the examination done, and they showed their DNA was nothing like what was in these tests. So they're just, they're just denying reality. And that, to me, goes into this realm. Okay, it appears that a, a, an academic has an obligation to examine evidence. And what is evidence? It's an available body of facts or inf information, including whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. So you have to show something. You have to come with evidence, which I have su supplied the DNA, the CAT scans, the specimens, the chemistry, the process, the whole nine yards. So avoiding evidence, I would say, and dismissing it without looking at it, is that acceptable as an academic? I, I really don't think it is. Okay, this is what students expect. They expect them to have a current knowledge of the subject matter, which is they're not current at all now because I have presented all this evidence. Now, faculty members have a responsibility to their students to entertain all questions relevant to the subject matter being taught and to discuss such questions, even if controversial, objectively. They have to talk about it. I've been told that the students are not allowed to speak about this and they're not about allowed to talk about it. They're considered a disruptive and they're afraid they're going to get failed. And they will. They're right. Now, dismissal in academia is across the board and in our government agencies. Our planet is about to be destroyed and it's dismissiveness of Fermilab and all the rest of them that is, is, is giving us this kind of a destruction of our atmosphere. You know, now that we're talking about academic fraud, I've been trying to save the planet with f cold fusion, and I've been refused by Fermilab specifically, but most of them in general, every, every single one has refused to see it. I can do what they're trying to do, and I think we can get free energy by using this right here to accelerate light, then break it into fission and then fusion. Let me show you. And this is what we're up against right now. Record-breaking heat waves, both Antarctic and the Arctic, simultaneously. Look at these temperatures. It's un unbelievable. Again, showed this for the last seven years. Light from a red pulse laser concussing with the particles that are in the air, which are gases. That's the light accelerating, which is not supposed to be allowed. That's why I'm not allowed in anywhere in physics because that is the particle accelerating. This is the fission and this is the fusion. This is raw energy and it is supposedly 200 times more energetic, 207 actually. Now, this is the particle that divided. That's the particle right there. That's the one that broke from the white and the black, it turned into white showers and a black ball. And it did it right there at the Venturi that we engineered and they will not allow to be spoken about at Fermi Lab. That, to me, is not, a, that's not acceptable. This is the kind of stuff we're up against. It's not, it's not acceptable anymore. We have to be allowed to speak. And not a single person will stand up because, oh, say Don Lincoln at Family Lab, he's just so oh, nobody can go against him. Of course they can. He's making all these statements. He puts out video after video, and, and he made one just laughing at me, saying, oh, there's some guy on the Internet saying he can accelerate light. And, you know, and, and I went back and forth with Don quite a bit, and finally he just cut me off because there's nothing he can do to, to talk about this other than say, get lost. And that's exactly what he did. He said, you're not peer-reviewed. We're not going to spend one minute to look at your information. That's our government employee. This is what we're up against. I have been showing this for seven years now. That is fission of the black and white particles. That is fusion. 
That's the black particle, the muon, never changes. The black ball stays the same as it is over here. The white turns into showers. We did it, CERN and Fermi Lab can't, and they won't let me speak to them because I'm not peer reviewed is what I was told by Fermi Lab. This is how we can harvest that, and this is a passive. This is cold fission and fusion on a desktop. We could have this in a couple of weeks if they will pay attention because all of the components exist. It just has to be, we engineered the Venturi that was just exactly perfect to create this division of the particles. Fission, fusion. I have another video coming out today that's on fission and fusion. And everybody in the world now is trying to do it and say, oh, we got to save the planet, we got to save the planet. We did it seven years ago. Why don't you talk to me? They refuse to talk to me because I'm not part of their crew. You see this? There's never been truer statements said. <laughs> Science advances one funeral at a time. This is Max Planck. I named my son Max. <laughs> this, this is what it says. A new science, hold on. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing opponents and making them see the light, even with all the evidence but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. We're starting to have that new generation, but I'm not waiting. I, I, don't, I don't have that much time left to wait for a generation. <laughs> Max, I love you, brother. My son says that, hi. Now, I just want to make one last statement. I have no damages, so I, I mean, for me, there's no reward to this whatsoever but somebody has to prove that this stuff is real and then you know students I would think have some kind of claim I would imagine uh, hearing what I have just shown and how dismissive academia has been I wouldn't be happy if I had paid to become a geologist or an archaeologist or an, all of those different ologists they have uh, you know without having taken this into account well how do you feel comfortable the same thing with physics to deny looking at the things that like light accelerating which we've shown very very simple to do and we can split the particles just what they're looking for at at um, CERN and uh, Fermi lab and all over the place so they should respond but this is the problem is that nobody will because as soon as you have evidence you're off the page and stay off the stage